a struggle for the soul of anarchism has been going on for thousands of years. Yeah. And it goes all the way back to uh, Diogenes is considered by many to be the first or second anarchist, Western anarchist. Um, he's a cynic, capital C cynic. And I kind of fell in love with Diogenes when I was in college because he had some great things to say, but then he had terrible things to say too that drove me away from him. And the great things were um, he would say that our possessions often possess us. Mm-hmm. And so he said that one of the happiest days of his life was the day he saw a dog drinking from a stream because he realized he would no longer have to carry a cup. So it's great because our, our possessions really do end up possessing us. And it was said that, that he was lying sunbathing. I love this story. He was lying sunbathing on a hill and uh, Alexander the Great came up to him and said, if I could be anybody else in the world, I would be you. So I would like to give you whatever you want. And Dodgings looked up at him and said, you know, you're standing in the sun. Could you move over a little bit? <laughs> and that's great. You know, you can see why I fell in love with him. Or another one is there was this one guy, Crates, I think his name was. I don't remember. Some guy who was who really sucked up to power all the time saw Diogenes cleaning vegetables in the stream and said, you know, if you knew how to say the right things to those in power, you would not have to wash your own vegetables. And Diogenes looked at him and said, you know, if you would learn how to wash your own vegetables, you wouldn't have to say nice things to those in power. <laughs> so he's great on that level. Yeah, but, yeah. but he also, he had been to the, the Oracle at Delphi, and the Oracle at Delphi told him that his life goal – was to, quote, deface cultural currency. And what that meant to him is that he was supposed to uh, violate every social norm. And so I like what he said so far, but the next things I just hate and is what drove me away from him and is exactly the point of of all this discussion so far is that he would uh, defecate in the theater and he would masturbate in the, uh, in the, the public market and mm-hmm. he would uh, walk around giving everybody the middle finger, which meant the same thing. I didn't know this until I read this about him. The middle finger meant the same thing back then as it does now. Okay. And he would walk through the, the marketplace giving every, flipping everybody off. And if anybody got upset, he'd say, hey, this is just cultural convention. If I pointed my finger at you, you wouldn't get upset. But if I point the middle finger at you, you get really upset. What's your problem? Which is so insulting on so many levels. It's like, dude, first off, you didn't point your first finger. You pointed the middle finger because you wanted to violate me. And it's the same. He, he would masturbate in public. He would shit in public so that so that he could violate. That was the whole point was to intentionally violate others. Um, he would beg and then he would insult the people who gave him money. And one time he was in somebody's house and the guy said, stop spitting on my floor. And he said, OK, and spat in the guy's face. Right. So he's just an ass, you know? Mm-hmm. And so that that problem, we can see where that comes right to today, right? That's right. the exact same conflict that we're talking about. 